Good day everyone, I am Jeremy Ramos from FN2D and this is my answer in Activity 1 in Unit Time. And this is my answer in question number 1. The concept of relative timing is defines the duration of several time intervals within the movement. So it means movement is performed in a shorter movement time than the second movement. And the practitioner used this concept to determine the differences between classes of movements by calculating the set of ratios. Because if, uh, if the set of ratios is the same for a two repetition of the same general movement, it can result in different overall movement times. That's, uh, that's why I said the way to determine the differences between classes of movement is by calculating the set of ratios. And don't forget to measure and record the duration of muscular activity in three of the important muscles in that and in that aspect practitioner determines the differences between classes of movements and the relative timing of a uh, dart throwing is deeper from putting a shot in terms of how to carry the dart and the and the shot and it can affect the relative timing structure why because have a possibility that the arms and wrist is a uh, more faster if we throw a dart because of the weight of uh, of it unlike Unlike in the foot, uh, in footing the shot, that have possibility to change the speed of arms and wrists because of the timing needed if we footing the shot. And this is my answer in question number two. The scientists mean when they say uh, that relative timing is an invariant future of the generalized motor program is when the performer changes the speed of the rapid movement, size of the action force used to produce the action and trajectory of the of the movements and the implication does the performers practice their movements at different speed in the condition under the speed accuracy trade-off in rapid continuous movement the performer must uh, practice in a different uh, speed while he or she doing movement and it can help to have a speed and the accuracy of movements when the performer practice their movement in different speed also we all uh, we all we all know that when we doing things too quickly we we tend to do them less effectively or accurately and this is my answer in question number three under the condition of the speed accuracy trade-offs in very rapid discrete movements performers movement more spatially accurate as the person decrease his or her movements time because in this condition you must have to make a quick movement where spatial accuracy at the target is the major goal so it means accuracy change as your movement time because if you move quickly it possible to increase the movement time and the implication for an elementary physical instructor who is teaching children how to throw or kick the ball toward a target is the invariant relative timing in throwing movement why because it helps children also the physical instructor to show their generalized motor programs that making it possible for individual to produce an essential uh, uh, to produce an essential limitless number of different throw so it means it it helps children to throw the ball toward the target and this is my answer in last question the error in a low level central nervous system might cause a player throwing darts to miss the target area she is aiming for because if we have a low level central nervous system it can affect the motor program output in, in into body movements and that motor program are responsible for determining the ordering of muscle contraction and the amount of force that are generated in the respective muscles. So it means the player have a big possibility to miss the target area even when a performer attempts to produce the same force over and over on successive trials and that variability is caused by the re relatively noisy processes in the central nervous system and for me that's the reason why low level central nervous system have a big impact of how to throw the dart and get missed to the target area by player.